It's just taking a little bit longer. Um, Karina, how long is this going for? Is it 40 minutes or so? Around 30 to 40, yeah. 30, yeah, okay, right, yeah. Okay, we're good to go, thank you. Are we ready, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Professional Beauty and Hairdresser Journal Ireland. Sorry, I nearly ran out of breath there. Um, our webinar for this week. And uh, this week, we're talking to John Donnelly of Digital Salon. And our topic is building your business online when you're off. So uh, welcome, John, and thank you for joining us. Thanks very much, Karina. Um, so, yeah, so obviously your business is, you're in the business of digital salon, um, helping salons have a digital presence. So what I wanted to ask you first was, and what we were just saying there before we went live, um, in the salon and spa industry, um, well, I suppose with, with everybody at the moment, um, we're approximately two months into the lockdown, and for the Spa and salon industry um, going by, if we're still going to be going back in phase four, we've about another two months to go. So we're ha halfway through. Um, so this has meant that, you know, the industry has had to make do with a virtual presence because uh, everybody's closed. And how important do you think this has been up to now for, you know, those businesses in maintaining their, you know, their, their presence, their communication, their just that people haven't forgotten about them up to now. How, how important do you think that's been? I think it's 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 vitally important, and not just not just during this uh, COVID nineteen emergency. I mean, it's 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 vitally important um, full time. Like you know, um, it's really important that that people can um, stay in touch with their salon, um, can you know find out what's what's happening with their salon. Um, and, uh, you know, we're 80, 90 percent of all uh, searches now online are through Google. So, I mean, when people want to find out something about their salon or want to keep up to date with what their salon is doing, they go straight to Google and um, they, they search. They search for the salon. So if you're not there on Google or if your presence on Google is not sort of good, um, you know, they're not going to find you and they're not going to uh, find this sort of the, the information that you want to get across to them, you know, so it's, it's vitally important now, but it's important at the best of times as well. I mean, you know, salons are open maybe eight, 10 hours a day or so, um, but for the other 14, 14 hours, they're closed. And um, people want to be able to book online. They want to be able to buy products. They want to be able to buy gift vouchers. You know, um, not always during uh, salon hours, you know, sometimes outside, a lot of times outside of salon hours, you know, so that's why the, the virtual, the, the actual virtual presence is really, really important for salons. Okay, and um, going forward now, as I said, we're, you know, we're halfway through the lockdown. Um, would you recommend that businesses, um, if they've already been building on their online presence, that they, they kind of use this time to build it even more or you know god forbid they haven't started at all <laughs> well like, it's it's, it's certainly not too late um i mean it it, it from 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 a, a building a presence online you know is 
it can actually start very, very easily in, in terms of, you know, your Google listing, which actually doesn't cost anything at all. Um, you know, and what you do is you, you go on, you, you go on to a, a site called Google My Business and you claim your listing. So a lot of salons, when, when you go on to, on to Google, um, you know, you, your salon has um, a Google listing, but a lot of salons don't actually claim that listing. So what they need to do is go onto this Google My Business and claim their listing. It's free. Okay, so anybody can do it. Um, and once they claim that listing, then they populate that, that listing with um, you know, pictures, with videos, uh, all the information about the salon, how to book. Um, you know, there's lots and lots of things you can do uh, on that simple listing and it's free. So, you know, so that's what they should be doing. Um, you know, apart from that, then you know, I, I think you should have a website as well. Um, I think pretty much every business uh, in the world uh, should have a website. You should have some central area where people can go to and they can find out a bit about the salon. They can find out your prices. If you go to any Google search for a salon on, on Google, at the bottom of the page, it will say the most popular searches relating to this salon. And pretty much every single salon, you'd see the search salon name, price list. Okay, so they're looking for your prices. Okay, um, you know all the other information they like to know about who's working in the salon. You know how well they're trained, that type of thing. So meet the team feature. Um, you know all of the all of the, the the sort of popular things that we put onto websites for salons. Um, but you know that website has to be there in the first place. If it's not there, they can't find out that information about your salon. Yeah, certainly they can go to your social media page, maybe your Facebook, your Instagram, but it's not the same. You know, I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is that, you know, certainly you do need to have a Facebook page, you do need to have an Instagram page, but you also need to have a website. You know, clients trust a salon more or trust a business more if they have a website, okay? Especially during this, this period where there's been a lot of scams, there's been a lot of, you know, people taking advantage of, 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 uh, of, of other people in sort of dire straits or whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, so when they see a, a salon with a website, with all their information on it, with their book now feature, with their uh, Instagram running through their website, all of the features that we provide, they trust that salon a lot more, you know, so you really need to have that presence online. Okay. And that's, sorry, that, that, um, with the Google listing, so somebody goes on Google My Business. Yeah, Google My Business, it's, uh, it, it just go to Google and Google it, <laughs> Google My Business, <laughs> and uh, just you go in and claim your, your, your listing. As I said, you know, if, if anybody's not sure about what they're doing, just give us a call, send us an email, we'll explain the whole thing to you. Um, and as I said, it's free of charge. What happens is that Google sort of knows that your business is there, but they don't really know that it's, it, it's, it exists. You know, they don't, they're not sure until you actually claim it. You know, okay. so once you claim it, then they know that you're there. And then, you know, what happens then is that, you know, once you've claimed it, you then go into the credibility stakes, if, if you know what I mean. Like, so it means then that, you know, you're a credible business. And yeah. Google then starts ranking you amongst all the businesses in your area. Okay. So, um, you know, the higher, which is obviously, I think one of the next questions you're coming to is how you get up those, those listings and how you actually promote yourself online. But, you know, there's lots of ways that you can do that, which I can go through with you as well. Yeah. Well, yeah, what I wanted to ask was almost kind of where do you begin? Say, like you've decided that, you know, you're, you're, yeah. you want your salon to have a website. What are the actual key things that need to be there? Like I mentioned to you, like uh, obviously contact details, that sort of thing. But even in terms of like branding or color mm. schemes, you know, because nobody <clears throat> wants to land on a page that looks awful, <laughs> you know. But yeah, what, I mean, what are the basics? Yeah, there's, there's a, like a lot of salons spend an awful lot of money on, on their shop front, you know, and how they look and what their logo is and you know, the, the sort of the, the brand that they project. But, you know, if um, somebody is looking for, for a salon to, to go to, you know, they're not going to get in the car and drive down and have a look at your shop front, okay? They're going to look, they're going to go to Google and they're going to look at your, your basically your virtual shop front uh, on Google. So how you actually project yourself uh, is really, really important. Um, and the way we, we work fairly closely with salons in, in getting, 
first of all, it comes from their logo. So, I mean, you know, a really good logo is really important, but then, you know, the color scheme of the logo and the look of the logo then projects right through the website, you know, so, um, Really, it's it, websites are about you know it's it, it's not as important to have it as you know as aesthetically sort of um, good looking as possible. It's it's really making it easy for the customer to get the information they're looking for. That's the most important thing, you know. So we see a lot of websites that um, you know are, are, are very artistic, you know, and um, a lot of thought and a lot of probably money has gone into it. But when a customer goes onto it, it's very difficult to find stuff. You know, it's yeah. how do I find the price list. You know, how do I, uh, you know, how do I book online? How do I, there's lots of stuff that you know it's just a little bit difficult to get. So our philosophy is always, you know, looking at the customer first, looking at the, at your client first, and seeing making their journey an awful lot easier. You know, as easy as possible on the website. You know, and that starts with your Google listing, and then leads right through to your website. And eventually leads through to them making a booking or um, buying a product or buying a gift voucher or whatever. But that's what you want. That's your ultimate goal. Okay. And uh, and I know that Digital Salon was doing the, was it the one page website? Yeah, we, we felt that um, a lot of salons were struggling, you know, to... Um, to get that online presence. So what we did was we, we, we made an offer for salons that, um, you know, if they hadn't got a website and they just needed a quick, you know, online presence, we would do a one page uh, site for them, a one page landing page basically. And we would link them to a voucher uh, connect, a voucher uh, purchasing platform so that their customers could buy uh, vouchers. So we did all that free of charge. Um, for for salons all over the country, we did about I think we about, did about thirty uh, landing pages. So um, okay. we're, we were just delighted that we could help out some salons, mostly small, mostly you know just struggling to get some sort of an online presence. You know, so that's yeah, so just like it, and it gave it was like a shop a shop yeah. front for them online. Now, the, like the, the local enterprise offices uh, have done a fantastic um, scheme called the Trading Online Voucher, mm -hmm. uh, which, yeah, which is, which they're basically, you know, they're refunding 90% of the cost of, of a, an e-commerce website. So um, a lot of salons have applied for that and it's still available. So I would definitely advise um, any salon out there thinking of, of getting they're, you know, you don't even, you know, if you don't have a website, you know, getting a website done, even if you do have a website, adding a shop onto it, or even just improving the website, you know, apply for that grant because it's there to be got, you know, and it's 90% of the cost that you outlay. So um, it's well, well worth doing, you know. Okay. And just in terms of, of contact details, like, have you any idea of what's more popular, I suppose it depends really on the size of the salon, like do, do you think people always want to have an option of a phone number, do they want to have an email, I know that you know a lot of places now use the online booking systems but in terms of do you know like if a person just actually wants to speak to another human being, should there always be that option you know that they can or send a direct email that they don't have to do the online form filling, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the personal contact with salons is never going to go away. Um, you know, clients will always want to pick up the phone and talk to a receptionist or talk to, to somebody within the salon. You know, it's that's never going to go away. So that will never be replaced. Um, but yeah, I mean, your, your, your website has to obviously have all the contact details. Um, you know, people might want to send an email, they might want to phone. Um, I, I do think though that that online booking is, is it's pretty mainstream now at this stage. You know, I mean, it was yeah. up, until, up until maybe two years ago, it was sort of like, a, you know, something that's coming along, but hasn't really arrived yet, but it certainly mm. has arrived now and it is mainstream. And really, you know, um, any salon that's that's talking to, that's thinking about putting in um, you know, getting online bookings uh, for their website, they should definitely you know look around, and make sure that uh, they're not paying you know for the for the privilege of having uh, online booking on their website because you know it's not a privilege. You should everybody every salon should have online bookings. 
you know, you should not have to pay uh, a premium, you know, for uh, clients booking through that service, you know. So have a look around, make sure that, you know, that you're not paying over the odds for for uh, these services, you know. Okay, um, sorry, we just had uh, somebody asked a question there. Uh, it's gone off my screen there now, but it was uh, somebody called Aoife who wanted to, uh, for you to repeat the name of the grant. It's the voucher scheme, is it? Yeah, it's it's from your local enterprise office. Um, that's if you're in the Republic of Ireland, okay? Yeah. Um, and it's called the Trading Online Voucher Scheme. Okay. okay. So uh, really my advice would be to actually phone your local enterprise office um, apply as tell them that you want to apply for the trading online voucher they will book you on to a webinar you have to do a three-hour webinar you then have to fill you have to fill out a an online an online application form which we will talk you through um, so if if it wants to give us a call uh, or else send us an email we can talk it through the whole thing um, and um, you know 99% of salons are getting approved for it so it's there to be got you know the, the the only stipulation is that you can't apply more than 10 people and you can't turn over more than two million euro okay okay and somebody sorry somebody else asked there uh sorry Ethan, so thank you and somebody else asked um is the grant two and a half grand yeah it's up to a maximum of two and a half thousand um, yeah and she she wanted to know would would that amount of money get you an e-commerce website yes it would yeah Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we would be uh, generally we would be doing websites for around uh, e-commerce websites for around um, two thousand to two to three thousand, depending on how many um, uh, products you have. Most the average would be around two thousand seven hundred, but you get ninety percent of that back. So it means that you know um, you get back all of our two hundred seventy euros. So basically, a, an online an online sorry an e-commerce website. Will cost you probably about 270 euros yeah well worth it in the long run <laughs> i think so <laughs> yeah. yeah especially at the moment yeah and, um then i just wanted to ask um i suppose like again when when a, a person arrives onto a website are there some things that are like an immediate turn off to people and um, meaning that you're in danger of losing them almost immediately immediately um, and I think you mentioned it there, like, for example, you know, if a page is is really hard to navigate, if it's difficult to understand, um, what are like, what are the main no-nos and like, what should you avoid, like those pitfalls to make sure that like when a person arrives on your website, they're going to stay there because people, you know, yourself, people just, you're gone, like <laughs> something annoys you, you're gone. Absolutely, yeah. Well, I think yeah. Generally, um, people when they hit a website, they only spend probably between two and four seconds anyway. So um, yeah. you know, you've got to you've got to have something interesting for them to, to drag them in. Um, and obviously, the big turnoffs would be well, first of all, if it's not mobile friendly, you know, because most of the searches now being done are, are, are from a mobile. So if your website doesn't sort of reshape itself to fit your mobile screen, it's a turnoff straight away because you're pinching your screen to try and get in to, to read whatever it is you want to read. Uh, secondly is speed of loading. You've got to have a, a website that loads quickly. If it doesn't load quickly, if it doesn't load within, say, two seconds, your customer is gone. OK, that's how quick things happen. You know, so um, and a lot of the a lot of the websites we come across, you know, they're they're getting a little bit old at this stage and they're not being looked after. You know, so um, a lot of the software behind the website, um, what's called plugins, they're not being updated you know, on a regular basis, which means that, you know, it's like not updating your Windows 10. You know, if you don't do your Windows or don't upgrade or update your Safari on your on your iPhone, mm -hmm. you know, your phone slows down, you know, your Windows slow down. So your website slows down as well, okay? So it's really, really important that the website is kept up to date. It's really important that the content is kept up to date because yeah. you went to some, some websites, you know, and you see a blog from 2004 or 2014. Or Very often. It's really, really off-putting. So you really need to keep it up to date, okay? Um, but then once you do get, once somebody does get into your website, there are certain things then that really do sort of attract their attention. And one of them is video, okay? And video is really, really important these days because people don't really read much anymore. 
you know, they, they're, they're really sort of, they're constantly sort of, um, it's, it's a video age, you know, it's, it's an image age, you know, yeah. so you have a video that attracts them in straight away. Um, they will spend an awful lot longer on that site, you know, so we've, there was a survey done that when a video on a site increases the engagement eightfold, so they will spend eight times longer on a website if there's video on that website. So again, we, we produce um, promo videos for salons, um, which would be like 60 to 80 seconds long. Um, and, you know, we, we sort of go in and we, 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 we sort of get a flavor of how warm and friendly the salon is and yet how professional the salon is. And that really does work at, at uh, you know, drawing people into websites. You know, so the, the blo you know, blogs are really important as well. Um, and like all of these things that I'm saying as well, all of these count as well towards your, um, how, how well you rank on the internet. You know, so you have like two rankings, you have your Google listing and then you have your organic listing. So Google listing is where you go on to, uh, you, you Google a salon in say Drogheda, okay? And Google comes back with the top three salons in Drogheda, okay? Um, and you open that up and then you've got the whole list of all the salons in Drogheda. Now where you appear on that list um, is a function of um, all the things that Google rate, like speed of loading of your website, like video on your website, like, you know, has your Google listing been, been claimed? And um, all of those things that I mentioned, you know, earlier on, um, even blogs are really, really important on websites in terms of ranking, you know, so the higher up that ranking you are, the more chance that people will actually choose to go into your listing and from your listing then into your website. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's really, really important that your website is well maintained, is kept up to date, um, is attractive to the customers that you're that you're trying to to get onto your website, um, and that you know you keep it up to date with blogs and things like that as well. So that's what we do is that we work with salons on all of those features on an ongoing basis. So we when we do a website, we don't just sort of say there you go, there's your website. You know, and, and we come across an awful lot of salons like that where somebody did their website and he's emigrated to Australia or he's he can't be found or whatever, you know, <laughs> they can't get anything done with their website. Yeah. You know, so it's important that, you know, when you choose when you're choosing a company that you make sure that that company is, is there to stay and they uh, are working on your website on a monthly basis to keep it up to date and to keep it up the rankings you know, for, for your Google listings. Okay, and is it possible as well to get somebody to do your website and then, you know, that you're not tied into like a, a, a monthly contract or whatever? Like, do you kind of cater for different different needs? You know, yeah. like say if somebody, do, like somebody obviously wants to invest in, in a website but, and they're, they're willing to invest in it on an ongoing basis. But what about the person that just wants to do kind of a one-off payment and not do a monthly payment or is that depending on the client? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, obviously payments are, are flexible. They can be a one-off payment or they can be uh, monthly. But I think monthly sort of um, means that, you know, when, when we sign a contract with, with a salon, it means that we're contracted to keep their website up to date. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we don't charge a whole lot. Like it's, it's a very nominal fee, 35 euros a month. Um, and, you know, it's a nominal fee, um, but it means that anything that the customer, that the salon owner has in terms of an update, in terms of maybe a new member of staff, in terms of a, a new treatment that they're doing, yeah. um, just send it to us. We'll, we'll look after it. We'll put it up on the website for you. So, um, Salon owners are so busy, they're going to be so busy when they open up um, with two shifts and everything else. Um, you know, they're not going to have time. They don't have time. Yeah. Despite all the best intentions. They just don't yeah. have time to update their website. So that's yeah. where we come in. We, we, yeah. we do that service, you know. And I think that what you said there about the blog as well is so important, you know, that like, I think if you're going to have a blog on your website, make sure that you're willing to commit to up updating it because as you said there, if you go on a website and there's a blog there from like four years ago, you just, yeah. you immediately, again, like I said, you're gone. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Well, again, that's, that's what we do as well. Like, you know, so if it's affecting, you know, an old, older sort of blogs, or whatever, are affecting your, your Google listing, we, we'll say that to you, you know, we'll say, look, we need, yeah. to, we need to send us on some blogs, you know, we need to, 
we need to get this updated a bit, you know, so. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And yeah. then I suppose, like, uh, as I keep saying, we, you know, more than likely we have two months to go. So how can salons at the moment now and over the next two months use their online presence to prepare for that, you know, the big day we're nearly falling at this stage? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, uh, the salons that have, um, you know, uh, shops, uh, e-commerce shops built into their websites, they're really, really busy. Uh, they're selling loads of products, you know, because, you know, people people need product at this stage, you know, for their yeah. hair, for their face, whatever. Um, and so, so yeah, so salons that are doing that are doing really well. Um, other salons, yeah, there, there's a lot of things that are going to need to be done in the next couple of months uh, or next eight weeks or so. Um, you know, I suppose there's going to be a bit of a stampede in terms of appointments or people looking for appointments. Um, so we have developed actually a waiting list, um, which you can send out to clients by text message or by email um, or put it onto your website or onto your social media. And um, clients can actually, you know, register their interest in making a booking, you know, on going on that list so that when you do when the clarity comes as regards when they're actually when you're actually going to open up um, you can then have a list and you can start contacting everybody and booking them into slots that uh, you know that that uh, basically given them slots you know, appointment slots um, also of importance is going to be um, COVID-19 sort of questionnaires you know making sure that customers answer questions uh, before they come into the salon about whether they've had it or whether they have any symptoms or, you know, whether they've been in contact with anybody or whatever, you know. So, um, again, getting a form like that out to your customers, to your clients is going to be important. Um, also really important, I think, is, is uh, because everything is going to be appointment only from now on, you know, anybody that's been operating a, a sort of a walk-in type okay, business. Yeah. You know, it's it just it's not going to be anymore. You know, you've got to take appointments. So it's really, really important, I think, to have some sort of a software system in your salon that can take appointments, that can offer uh, online bookings, et cetera, et cetera, um, but can also store um, the information that your clients have given you and the, the, the information of the client being in the salon, you know, so that for future contact tracing and things like that, you know, you can actually quickly put your hands on a list of all the clients who are in the salon that day and just email it to whoever, whatever body is doing the contact tracing, you know, so, um, so I think, you know, that, that's the immediacy of, of having a computer system, but I think in general, I mean, having a computer system in your salon, it, it just brings so many benefits to you. Um, you know, in terms of managing the business, you know, being able to put your finger on reports, you know, KPIs, key performance indicators, you know, how often are your clients coming back to your salon? How much are they spending with you on service and on retail? You know, what's their average spend? Even just doing things like, you know, um, loyalty schemes, um, you know, all of those type of things um, are really, really important in any salon, you know, whether it's in COVID-19 times or whether it's just in general times, you know, yeah. you need to, you're managing a business, you know, and um, some salon owners sort of feel that they're going into the salon to be creative and to do people's hair and to, you know, work on doing facials and all the rest, but um, they sort of forget about the business side of things. And, you know, to have a computer system in place, you know, collating all that information and giving it to you uh, in the way that makes sense and that you're able to send to your accountant, that you're able to um, maximize the clients, the number of clients that are coming into your salon, you know, through marketing, through text messaging, all of that type of thing. Um, I think it's really important. And I think it's going to be even more important going forward that, that you do have those systems in place. Um, and again, it's really important as well that you have a company that looks after that system properly. You know, it's it's no good putting in um, maybe a free system that, you know, is worldwide and it's all over the States or whatever it is. But, you know, something goes wrong with it. Where do you get the support from? You know, um, yeah, you do have to pay for, you know, systems such as shortcuts, which is what we do. Um, but it's well worth paying for it. It's, it. The monthly fee, like, you know, two colors a month or, you know, uh, whatever, three facials a month, 
pays for your system for the month, you know, so including support. And um, so it's really, really important, I think, going forward um, that, you know, every salon should have some sort of system in place. Yeah, um, just what you were saying there, um, you know, that people want to be creative, you know, and do hair. And, and it was, someone said that to me recently that, um, you know, if you're if you're going down the road of opening your own salon and, and you're, you're so artistic and all of that, that like you have to remember, as you said, the business side of it as well, because like, she said, like, if you don't do that and you're not running a business, you just have a very expensive hobby. <laughs> so I thought it was a really, really good way of putting it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, money. And um, I think, um, you know, the salons that are that are do, really doing well, um, you know, are the ones that have their finger on the pulse, you know. And without a computer system, it's so difficult to, put, to keep your finger on, to actually know what's going on in your salon, you know. And, you know, you, you have staff in there, you know, that some of them are really, really good and really, really conscientious and doing their job to the best of their ability. And there are others that aren't, you know, and you have to really sort of make sure that you, you know what's going on and you, you incentivize that staff, those staff as well, you know, through um, targets and things like that, which can be done through the computer system as well. OK, and, uh, and then just lastly, um, you know, I'm fast forwarding to when we're we're back in business, let's say the 20th of July. And as you, the word you used, I think was stampede, <laughs> stampede of clients coming in the door, everybody wanting to get their hair done. Like how, can, like, so people, because salons have been closed and they've had this time in their hands to build an online presence, to kind of put a lot more effort into, you know, that virtual world. Because as I said to you as well, like we've all just been, even if you never wanted to go online and if you were the biggest technophobe that ever existed, you've actually had no choice in the last two months, but just, just go online because if you don't go online, you're just excluded from the world. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, for any salon owners now that, you know, they're, they're hoping and, and hopefully this, this is what's going to happen. They're going to be really, really busy, but they've worked so hard to build the online presence. When we go back to, I'm not going to say normal because it's going to be a different sort of normal, but really how normal. do they blend, like blend both, like not lose that, all that work that they did. Like, I think I was saying to you, like, is it worth, you know, nominating a certain person in the business to look after it or like, how do, how do they do it? Yeah, I mean, things are obviously going to change, you know, the, the, the new normal um, is what everybody describes it as. Um, and I think if if um, if the whole sort of COVID nineteen team has has done it's it's changed people's um, buying habits, you know. Mm. Clients now realise that they can sit at home and they can order their um, their product, their shampoo, their conditioner, their their face cream, whatever it is, um, and get it delivered to their door the next day, you know, by courier, by post, or whatever. Um, I'm sure you know everybody has. I have a courier beating its beating his way to my door pretty much every second day you now. It's yeah. not coming in. So buying habits have definitely changed. Um, and I think people um, know the the the, uh, the 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 issues that are that salons are going to have in terms of uh, bookings, you know, um, appointments. You just can't walk into a salon anymore and, and ask for an appointment. You've got to either ring the salon or you've got to book online. Um, so you can't walk into a salon to buy a product. Uh, you know you have to uh, ring and order the product and then have it ready for you. That type of thing. You know, so you know, especially younger people don't they don't use their phones to ring people. They ring, use their phones to go online and to book stuff online and buy online and everything. You know, so so I think you know the whole. Um, landscape going forward is, is, is definitely going to be different and um, it's definitely going to be much more of a mix between um, online and you know in salon an awful lot more online than than it used to be mm. um, so anybody that has made the changes so far I think they're definitely uh, in a good position going forward um, anybody who still has not got a good online presence it's not too late to to start working on it. Um, we're here um, 24 seven, we're here all the time. Um, we have everybody working, um, we have developers uh, working from home in Ireland, uh, in New York. Um, so, you know, we're, um, we're working away full time 
and uh, we're also here to give advice at any stage you know so just drop us an email phone us whatever we give um, as much advice as we can but i really do think that um you know you really got to look at your online presence going forward and you've got to look at your physical infrastructure within your salon in terms of a salon computer system. I think it's really important that you have both going forward, you know, because that's what's going to sustain you, you know. Okay, and one last question there from um, Lisa. She wants to know if the online voucher scheme that's available through the local enterprise office could be used to invest in a computer booking system. Yes, it can. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's, there's, well, I mean, online booking or online, um, yeah, computer systems, um, you know, or sorry, computer systems um, do have an online element to them, you know, so, yeah. you, can, you know, you can sell gift vouchers, you can sell, um, obviously, make, get bookings directly into your system. So, so yes, they, we have checked that out with the local enterprise office. And yes, they are definitely. Um, so there's, there's a bit of flexibility within that grant. Oh, yeah, yeah, they, they, they will accept um, applications for computer systems. Um, we also do uh, digital signage for Windows as well, if they, uh, and they, they're actually okay for for the um for the grant as well you know so okay. anything digital really you know they're very flexible they know that salons are are you know in a bad way um and they're you know they're pretty willing to help out i think you yeah know, that's, that's the local enterprise office i think is it's a fantastic uh, you know facility that we have in this country um you know the uk don't have it uh, or they don't have the sort of grants that we're offering that they're offering over here and uh, i think they have to be applauded for it i think the government has to be applauded for um the foresight in in say in in offering this grant because you know it, it is a lifesaver for a lot of salons you know and it's it's to get 90 percent of the cost of a website back it's just it's just phenomenal you know so yeah um, hopefully they keep it going yeah and we've we've they didn't, they just announced as well the, is it called the Restart Grant? Yeah, there's going to be a Restart Grant announced tomorrow, I think, uh, or you can apply for it tomorrow. Apply for tomorrow, um, yeah. But yeah. it was just that when, when they announced it, uh, Minister Humphreys actually mentioned specifically hairdressers, you know, as being part of the fabric of society, that uh, that grant would be aimed at, you know, getting them up and running again. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, I mean, you know, there's, there's, lots of, there's lots of ways that... You know, there's going to be lots of expenses on salons between you know screens being put up and um, yeah. you know two shifts of employees and and all the rest like it, they're not going to be able to have as many people in the salon as as uh, they've had before so it's going to be difficult going forward it's certainly not going to be back to normal straight away um, yeah hopefully again you know this this grant will will allow them to to use you know to use the grant in, in, a, in wisely you know in terms of you know getting all those facilities in place and maybe even as well, you know, using it for putting in a computer system or, or um, you know, you know, working on their online presence. Um, yeah. It's their choice, you know, so. Yeah. Okay, um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, that was really informative and, uh, and it was lovely to have questions coming in as well. So uh, thank you very much. Great. And Thanks hopefully, great. hopefully we'll meet in the flesh at some point. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Thanks now we can just keep zooming and thanks everybody for tuning in and we will be back uh, probably at the same time next Thursday, um, but just keep an eye on our social for an update on that. So until next week. Okay, thanks again, John. Thank Bye. You. Bye.